a place which, as I've just mentioned, means a lot to me, all right? They have now supplied a jet. Hello, hi, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, you join me in Spain, a place called Jerez. I haven't spoken about this much, but my first ever job was at a racetrack, and I'll explain more when we get to the racetrack, we're gonna get there, but this is where I had my first ever job. Now, I am back with these. The Megan RS's, the new Megan RS. Rena invited me to come and test this brand new beast. There's a bit of an ugly bin in the way, but first off, I'm going to show you the exterior of the car. There's a lot of people taking photos around, so you may see people in the background. But this is the Megan RS, and uh, you may remember, long-time viewers, that I had a Megan GT loan car. Looks-wise, what is different? We've got these new front LED lights, which are actually meant to look a bit like a checkered flag, which was seen on the Clio RS, which I also had long-term loaner. A huge Renault grille. Everything blacked out around the front with R.S. Magic air outlet right here to get air out of the wheel arch uh, and then when we come back it's just got slight, slightly more beefed up wheel arches can't really see on camera too much but look absolutely lovely some more rs badging megan and then back here the classic megan rs dual exhaust central outlet uh, with a diffuser and some more air outlets here for the rear wheel arch looks really really cool this is the inside two main differences with the Megane GT. Someone's just nicking my stuff out the boot as we speak. These seats, full Alcantara side hugging seats. These are really, really nice, really nicely designed, but not only that, they're very comfortable. These were pretty much the same in the Megane GT, but they've been slightly beefed up for the RS. So you can tell there's also this sort of cut well fake carbon uh, this is kind of like fake carbon leather stuff not sure I'm a fan of this but I do like the red stitching and the red line on the seat belt which is very cool this however is the nicest thing it is this new steering wheel which is incredibly thick and has a really nice Alcantara top and bottom lining it would be quite nice if it went all the way around rather than this perforated leather but still very nice it's then also got these uh, paddles which are lovely to have, and the gearbox is great, I'll get all on, onto that in a second, but they're just quite far away, I don't know if it's me having small hands, but they feel quite far, and often you want to kind of click them down here, but they sort of just only go up, they don't go down at all, so they feel quite high up. The rest is all exactly the same as in the GT. So not too many differences, it's not as hardcore as you would maybe expect a Megan RS to be, I mean you still got a great sound system, sat nav, all of these random things, I mean you've got a head up display in a Megan RS. Heated seats, you've got all of the comfort aspects that you would hope for in a car. Maybe not the best for those hardcore Megan RS fans, but if you're using this every day, very good. I think it's about time we actually just see how this thing drives. Okay, so we're gonna kick off this drive with launch control. Pull both paddles, accelerate, foot on the brake, and here we go. Can you hear that noise? That is what, 280 horsepower from a turbocharged four-cylinder engine and 380 newton meters of torque. Feels like, this is the Megan RS. You guys know about this car, I am sure. It is legendary. It is Renault's legendary hot hatch, uh, which has been going for quite a while now. This is the newest, latest version. And it's quite interesting to be driving this car because it has a lot of new technology. For example, it's got what's called four control. That means it's got four wheel steering. Now, in this car, it's slightly different because some other cars have four wheel steering, but anywhere over 30 miles an hour, the four wheel steering gets canceled out. So in this car, the sound is actually so cool. Normally it comes to the speakers, but uh, switch that off so that it's purely exhaust sound. But anyways, the four wheel steering in this car, under 60 kilometers an hour, the four wheel steering turns in the opposite direction of the front wheels to give you a better turning circle and more maneuverability around town. The 
above 60 kilometers an hour, it turns in the same direction as the front wheels at a smaller angle and helps you have more maneuverability and sort of control on twisties like we're doing right now. It also gives you just a, a bunch more traction and helps carry you out of corners. It's really quite impressive, I'm not gonna lie, the other reviews I've seen, everyone's been raving about it. I, I don't know if it's the full control or it's just the steering, but there's something slightly dead feeling about the steering and about just the, the, the way it handles. Uh, I feel like it, there, there's something missing in the steering, uh, for me at least. Now that may have to do something to do with the weight. Uh, this car is quite heavy and for a Megan RS, it doesn't feel as hardcore as maybe you would wish. You've got heated seats, you've got a sat nav, you've even got a head-up display as I mentioned. So it's not quite as hardcore as you'd expect. It is definitely, definitely a car you could use every day. And there's a little button down here where you can switch to different driving modes. There's a ton of driving modes in this car. There's comfort, neutral, sport, race for the track. And it is one of the few cars uh, where it actually makes a massive difference what mode you're in. So in comfort, this car is so comfortable and you can cruise over. It's, it's more harsh, of course, than the Megane GT I used to have. But still, for a hot hatch like this, it doesn't feel like you're riding a skateboard. In sport, however, it gets very stiff and it makes a big difference. And that's quite cool. It also changes the exhaust sound, which is uh, rather lovely. Obviously, five door, four seat hot hatch, and 280 horsepower means it's not the most powerful in its class. It's also not the most wild looking. It's kind of in between, and they've tried to make it with the four wheel steering and things like that, so that even though you're maybe not the fastest in a straight line, you can catch up around the corners. And that's what it's all about with a car like this. You don't want to necessarily have too much power because you're just going to understeer everywhere. The drive this guy it actually feels manageable that is on the road however right now we've got the six speed dual clutch automatic car with what's called the sport chassis so no limited slip diff you can get right now it's not currently available but you will be able to get a manual limited slip this race chassis car and that's what we're going to try out on track well this is the track it is called Jerez and the reason this is important to me is my first job, I'm not sure I've mentioned this before, was for Mercedes Formula 1. I was analyzing data for them. And I was sent here during the F1 testing way back when Schumacher was coming back for his first year. Came to this track, first time I'd been to a proper track and saw the F1 cars. And now, I'm going out in the Megan RS. Megan RS, Jerez Racetrack, a place which, as I've just mentioned, means a lot to me, all right? No matter how much it means to me, Still means I have no clue where this goes. Right, we're in the Megan RS with a manual gearbox now and the race chassis. What does that mean? That means that this chassis is 10% stiffer than the sport chassis. It's an option. And we have a limited slip diff and a manual gearbox in this one, which is very good fun. Very short throw gearbox. Now, how does this car feel on track? A track which I do not know at all. As soon as you brake hard, it's got this Ferrari like thing where it puts the hazards on. Slightly annoying. Very late apex on this track. Oh, it gives you a beat when you need to change gear. That is so cool. Right, so acceleration rise. Nothing crazy before all hatch. Very good. Brakes work very well. Down into second. Right hander. Late, late, late apex for this. Power out. Bit of understeer, of course. 280 horsepower going to the front wheels. Traction does feel pretty good thanks to the full control. This track is awesome, it's just been repaved. A bit wobbly under braking, but the brakes do feel very solid. Brembo brakes. Turn in for a front wheel drive car, it's fantastic. Alright, tight chicane here down into second. One in, switch it up. Bit of understeer. The gearbox is lovely though, the manual 
would be the one to go for. What's quite nice is with this full control, you don't need too much steering input. So that feels quite nice because you can be a bit more precise with it. I mean, all of this being said, it is amazing what they've been able to do. A car that has heated seats and can be used so daily to be able to be this much fun and still have the boot that it has and the rear seats. That's that then, uh, that's the Megan RS. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed driving it on track and on road comparing. Hope you enjoyed the review. Huge thanks to Renault also because they have now supplied a jet to go home in, as you do. Very kind of them. I'm going back to Geneva now for one day and then I'm actually coming back to Spain to Marbella and I'm going to the Ascari racetrack with some very, very tasty supercars. So if you wanna see that, click the subscribe button and the videos will be up in a couple of days. I'm so excited, but thanks for watching as per usual. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon. Cheers. You're getting way too big for your boots You're never too big for the boot I got the big size holes in my feet Your face ain't big for my boots Kick up the you Man know that I kick up the you Them boy they try to suck the truth How dare you to suck the truth